Hi everyone! Hi guys! So for today's vlog, we are going to share kung paano kami nakarating dito sa Canada. Since nag-migrate po kami dito two years ago, marami pong nagtatanong sa amin, nagba-message, and then meron din po kami mga new subscribers na nag-a-ask or gave us suggestions to share our immigration journey. So here it is, para isang explain na lang. There are a lot of immigration pathways here in Canada, but the most common one is the Express Entry and Provincial Nominee Program. Our pathway is the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program and then Express Entry. We will explain further kung ano yung dalawa na yun. I know at first it can really be overwhelming kasi there are a lot of information online, also, maraming jargons or acronyms na bago, kaya di namin alam kung saan kami magsa-start. At one point, nagpa-consult kami sa agency and then they assessed our eligibility sa express entry kung paso kami and then they provide us information about the steps on what to do. However, we did not push through kasi yung charge nila if we are going to use their services is around 120,000 pesos that time, so 2016 yun. So we decided na instead of ibayad namin yung amount na yun, idagdag na lang namin sa proof of funds. So ito yung parang tinatawag minsan sa Pinas na show money. We decided to do DIY na lang. If hindi naman complicated yung application nyo, yung anumang issues, you can do DIY na lang. And you don't have to worry, there are a lot of support groups sa Facebook na Filipino aspiring immigrants then Also make sure na you have to fact check it from the Canada immigration website para you can be confident na tama yung information na nakukuha nyo. Naka-explain lahat doon. All you have to do is research and read. And also before you start your application, make sure that you're eligible sa pathway na pipiliin nyo. For example, us, express entry, my requirements doon, you should get at least 67 points out of 100. Dito nila nire-rate yung English language skills mo, education, work experience, age, adaptability, or your experience mo working in Canada, or if you have relatives in Canada. Ilalagay ko na lang sa description box below yung mga links. So the very first step na ginawa namin is nag-book kami ng IELTS exam. Since medyo matagal bago ka makakuha ng schedule, kailangan ahead of time din. And after the exam, uh, two weeks pa bago mo makuha yung result. For us, we decided to enroll sa IELTS Review Center sa Makati, sa yeah. J.Rus. One week siya, so nag pa kami sa work para lang maka-attend kami ng classes. Kasi ina-aim talaga namin na makakuha ng mataas na score. Although, marami namang resources online, mas preferred namin yung mag-enroll kami sa isang review center. And that really helps us a lot since hindi namin alam yung process. There are two types of IELTS, the general exam and then the academic exam. So, kinuha po namin is the general exam, which is for those people who want to migrate to Canada. Yung academic exam naman is for those who are going to apply as a student. We decided as well na both kami kukuha ng IELTS even though ako yung primary applicant. Mas okay na dalawa kayo kasi pandagdag points din. IELTS is an exam for them to gauge your English ability when it comes to speaking, reading, writing, and listening. And you must aim at least 6.5 band score. The higher the better para mas mataas yung points na makuha mo. And just to add, ang IELTS ay valid only for two years. The next step that we did is to get ECA or the Education Credential Assessment. Yung pinili po namin is WES or World Education Services. They are going to assess the Canadian equivalency ng education mo. And make sure that you also apply for ECA immediately because it takes 35 days before you get the results. And also, this is valid for five years. Ang requirement lang dito sa ECA is your academic transcript. There are two options how you're going to submit it. One is your school will be the one to submit it to WES. Or you can get your transcript from your school and then you will be the one to send it. So, kami, ginawa namin is, kinuha lang namin yung transcript from the school and kami na yung nag-send sa West via DHL. After we got those two, yung IELTS and then ECA document, we created an express entry profile. 
take note, hindi pa po i-upload yung documents na to. Ang kailangan lang sa express entry application is the results. Ilalagay mo lang siya sa form. These are all online. May mga questionnaires lang yung express entry application. Sasagatan mo lang siya. Make sure that all the information that you're going to provide is true. Kasi pag na-draw kayo or na-invite kayo to apply as a permanent resident, you have to make sure that you can provide proof. And the express entry application is valid for one year. Nung nakapag-submit na kami, yung points na nakuha namin is around 330 or 335. Di na namin matandaan kasi medyo matagal na. But nag-range siya sa ganong points. Nire-review namin yung mga previous invitations. Yung mga points ng mga applicants na nakukuha is around 600 pataas. So, sobrang layo ng points namin. Nagantay kami ng nagantay pero hindi kami nabubunot ng Canada to apply to them as an immigrant. Hindi pa rin kami sumuko. What we did is research again and we found out about the Provincial Nominee Program. Every province has its own Provincial Nominee Program. Iba-iba po yung qualifications and requirements nila. So make sure that you go to the website and read or check out the requirements and make sure that you're eligible. So we selected the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program because we have close relatives here. Yeah, Elmer and Joanna. Elmer is my cousin. One of the requirements for you to be eligible to apply for the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program is that you must have a close relative here. And the close relatives considered here in Manitoba is only your parent, grandparent, siblings, aunts or uncles, and then your first cousin. Aside from relatives, they also give points kung may friend kayo dito sa Manitoba. But that one is only, I think, 50 points. Pero pag may close relative kayo, additional 200 points. We immediately applied online then so dito sa Manitoba. Gumawa kami ng profile since meron na rin kaming IELTS and ECA results. So, nag-fill out lang kami online. After you complete all the form, answer all the questions, at the end of it, it will give you the total points that you will get. Yung nakuha namin is 447 points. Yung mga previous draws or yung previous na nabubunot ng Manitoba is around 500 points pataas. So, bitin pa rin kami ng ilang points kasi yung sa amin is 447. By the way, the profile or the application that you submitted sa Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program is valid then for one year. So, nagantay kami ng nagantay kahit sa express entry, di pa rin talaga kami nadudraw kasi hindi bumababa yung points. Laging 600 pataas. The same din sa dito sa Manitoba. Yung points is 500 pataas. So, umabot ng one year, hindi pa rin kami nabunot. Nag-expire na yung application namin. Pero, hindi pa rin kami nawalan ng pag-asa. Nuloy pa rin namin yung Canadian Dream namin. So, nung nag-expire siya, gumawa ulit kami at nag-apply ulit kami ng profile kasi libre naman siya. Yun ulit ang ginawa namin. Hindi kami sumuko. Aja! Yes. <laughs> and then, after a week, nakareceive kami ng email from the Manitoba government saying, we are invited to apply sa kanilang program. That email is an LAA? Or the letter of advice to apply. Yun na yung start ng application process namin as an immigrant dito sa Manitoba. Doon na din magsa-start na i-upload mo yung mga documents. You have to provide proof sa mga sinagot mo or dineclare mo sa application nyo online. Nung ma-receive namin yung LAA, we have 60 days to upload or complete the application form. Nakareceive kami ng letter of advice to apply nung March 13, 2018. And then, na-complete namin lahat ng requirements and documents ng April 29, 2018. Inabot kami ng one month and a half na kompletuhin yun. Kasi, aside sa mga requirements like IELTS, ECA, kailangan mo rin ng proof of funds. Ito yung... Show money! <laughs> yes. Pero, actually, hindi talaga show money siya. Kasi, dapat sa inyo talaga yung pera na yun. And the requirement for us, since we are a family of two, is... 16,000 Canadian dollars. And yung amount na yun is dapat nasa bank account ninyo for at least 6 months. The purpose of that proof of funds is that the government want to make sure that you have enough 
funds for you to start, hindi kayo mahihirapang mag-settle down. And yung 16,000 na yun, inis nila sa average amount na mag mo for 6 months. Aside from the proof of funds, isa sa mga kailangan mo pang gawin is yung tinatawag na SP1 and SP2. SP1 is the settlement plan. Ito yung fill out on mo. May mga questions doon sa form like, why did you chose Manitoba? Ano yung mga settlement plan mo? Ano ka makahanap ng work? Mga things like that. I-explain mo sa kanila. Kasi babasahin talaga yun ng immigration officer na nag a ng application mo. For them to understand bakit pinili mo mag-migrate sa specific province na yun. Yung SP2 naman is yung settlement plan ng supporter ninyo. Sinendan din siya ng immigration officer ng form to fill out. My questions din doon like, how do you know this person? How are you going to support them? Or how are you going to help them in settling here in Manitoba? So yung application namin, paulit-ulit namin talagang binasa. Nagpa-proofread ba kami kay Kuya Mon? Hello, Shout Kuya Mon. Shoutout nga pala, Kuya Mon Galsim. Thank you so much po. Talagang kasi gusto namin talagang ma-perfect yung application namin para approve kami. Kasi hindi porket na bunot ka na is sure ka ng magiging permanent resident. Kaya we wanna make sure that everything is clear and direct to the point yung purpose ng pagmamigrate namin. So we got an acknowledgement of receipt, meaning yung acknowledgement ng immigration officer na na-receive niya yung aming SP1 and SP2 no May 14. Ang kagandahan kasi dito, online, makikita mo yung status ng application mo. By September 25, yung status nag-change to in-process, meaning meron ng immigration officer na nag-check and nag a ng mga documents na sinubmit mo. Just to add, meron din pala ang mga sinalihang Facebook groups or messenger groups na same pathway than Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program. And si share kami ng experiences kasi bawat isa sa amin, iba-iba yung timeline. May mga iba na nauuna, meron namang iba na nadidelay yung pag-process ng application. So, malaking tulong yun kasi na pag-share kami, isa do nag-share na tinawagan daw yung supporter nila and tinawagan din sila. Dahil doon, medyo nag-worry din kami kasi September 25 is in process na meaning anytime soon tatawagan na ako for interview. Also, tatawagan din yung supporter. And within that week kasi, aalis ako papuntang Toronto for work. Isip namin na baka di namin masagot if ever tumawag man sa amin yung immigration officer. So, ang ginawa namin is in namin yung immigration officer to tell them na we might not be able to answer if they are going to call us. After two days, binalita kami nung pinsan ko na tinawagan na siya ng immigration officer. Ang mga questions is about how well do you know your relative? So, since tinawagan na yung supporter, medyo napalagay na ako kasi Ang sabi sa group namin, pag tinawagan na yung supporter mo, yung primary applicant is hindi na tatawagan. That means clear and straightforward naman yung application and wala namang itatanong pa sa'yo yung immigration officer. And after the interview, nakareceive kami ng email sa immigration officer asking for additional information. Yung additional information na hinihingi is yung express entry profile number namin. Then yung siblings PR card or citizen ID. Kasi aside sa cousin here in Manitoba, meron din siyang siblings sa Ontario. So, ginawa namin agad, niscan agad namin yung ID and yung express entry profile namin and inattach lang namin yung document na hinihingi ng immigration officer. And that's it. So, I was in Toronto for three weeks. While nandun ako, that was around October 1, nakareceive kami ng email ng letter of approval. Woohoo! LOA, kung tawagin. So, meaning, na-approve na yung Manitoba immigration application namin. Hindi pa doon nagtatapos. Kasi, after that, yung letter of approval na yun, kailangan mo yung i-attach sa express entry profile mo. So, dito na papasok yung express entry. Additional 600 points yun. So, remember, yung express entry profile namin na ginawa nung una is 300 plus, plus points lang. Plus, may 600 points pa kami sa Manitoba. So, 900, 900 points plus. na agad. Yep. So, yung mga nabubunod sa express entry, di ba, is 600 ba taas. And yung points na, na nakuha na namin is 900. So, ibig sabihin, pasok na pasok na talaga kami sa points. And by the way, <laughs> yung express entry is nagdodraw sila every two weeks. Same din sa Manitoba, every two weeks. By October 15, nagdraw na kami ng express entry. 
after a month, we received an email from Express Entry asking to apply. Na. So, ang mga requirements don is to upload mo lang online. Kasama na dun yung IELTS, ECA, yung proof of funds, passport information, birth certificate, at ng information nakalis naman dun. So, hindi kayo mawawala kung ano man yung requirements kasi lahat nakadetail. And kung may questions naman kayo sa specific item na kailangan, meron namang explanation dun kung ano yung gagawin ninyo sa specific item na yun. On the Canadian website, there's always a question mark button there that you can always click to provide more information. Upon submitting the documents, by November 13, pa medical na kami and they have accredited hospitals and clinics that you can go to complete our medical exam. That's in St. Luke's, sa Makati. By December 18, nakareceive kami ng email na medical pass. January 10, 2019, nakareceive ulit kami ng email from Express Entry asking to pay $490 each for RRPF for the permanent residence fee. Sa ganitong stage, parang... Feeling mo approved na approved yeah, ka na. Yeah. Then, Feb 8, 2019, nakareceive kami na we need to send out our passport for... Visa stamping. By February 12, sinabit namin yung passports namin sa Canadian Embassy. And then, in just four days, diniliver sa amin yung passport namin na may visa stamp na. Di kami makapaniwala pag open namin ang passport, may stamp na ng visa and then nakalagay doon is immigrant. And that stamp is valid for one-way entry and valid for 12 months. May time ka pa para mag-asikaso kung meron ka pang mga kailangang asikasuhin before you move here in Canada. For us, we took two months before kami mag-land dito kasi we want to make sure that we spend our time sa family namin and to our loved ones kasi magmamigrate na kami so medyo matagal-tagal before makauwi in February 16 namin na receive yung visa and we landed here first week of June so tinaon talaga namin na summer para hindi kami mabigla sa weather so our takeaway in our immigration journey is that do not lose hope kasi God's timing is always perfect imagine kung hindi kami nag-submit ng application ulit after my expiring first application namin is hindi sana kami nandito kasi nung nabunot kami after the next draws tumaas ulit yung points so yung time na yun talaga biglang bumaba yung points namin kaya kami na draw sa Manitoba so talagang nakaka-amaze and parang inisip namin na binigay talaga sa amin kaya advice namin is do not lose hope magtiwala lang kayo and always pray para i-guide kayo ng tamang gagawin yeah. So in total, our immigration journey took us 11 months. We started March 2018 from the second application and we got the visa stamp Feb 2019. If you have any questions, we will be glad to answer it. Just comment down below or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And watch out for our upcoming videos as we talk about yung mga nagastos namin immigration namin and also about our job hunting experience don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell bye, bye.